So I'd like to talk about rain gear for a bit, and obviously this is not it. Let me change it to something more comfortable. One day, it started raining, and it didn't quit for four months. So first, the difference between static and active insulation. What is wrong with you? Why are you blue? This is static insulation. This is, oh shit, it's pouring. I better put every bit of rain gear I have on that's easily accessible. This is the stuff that should be near the top of your pack or somewhere close to it where you can get to it quickly and easily. It does not wick away sweat. It doesn't breathe. It's simply a protective barrier to keep you from getting soaked while you find shelter. One thing that static insulation fails to take into account, however, is movement. How much you sweat determines how wet you are at the end of the day. It's not so much of a big deal for a day trip, but for multi-day, that gets to be worse and worse every day that you're out. You're getting more and more damp. Keep yourself dry. It doesn't always work that way in the field. When things go wrong, it tends to be a domino effect, especially when it's cold. This video is not about when it's 60 degrees and raining, it's about when it's 35 degrees and raining. So stay tuned, I hope you'll enjoy, and I hope you'll learn something out of it. And even if you don't, too bad. The weather is unfortunately improving. As you can see, I was planning on filming this in the rain. Oh, how horrible I get to stand out and be dry. Anyway, base layer. Synthetic or wool? That wicks away sweat. Simple, easy, every backpacker should know this. And uh, it's relatively cheap, honestly, to get a good synthetic layer that wicks away sweat. Basically, most of your thermal underwear or whatever can do this. Next up is a mid layer. I go for two different types when it's raining out. So I have this basically a wind shirt. It, uh, it's, it's made by Outdoor Research. It's water resistant and stops the wind too. Um, but it doesn't provide much insulation. This is for obviously when it's raining out, but it's not too cold. This is a fleece jacket. You can get these at any thrift store. And I like these a lot for when it's cold. These provide a lot of insulation, especially when they're paired with a rain jacket. There are now plenty of options that provide more insulation for less weight and bulk. However, they're also far more expensive. In fact, the term active insulation was brought into popularity by Polar Tech. And it is just a marketing term, but I think it applies here very well. Wool is another example of a good mid-layer, but I don't have a good example to show you. So get this neat B-roll instead. A rain jacket, instead of a rain poncho, tends to provide a little bit better ventilation if it's properly designed. For example, this one has pit zips, very fancy. And it also allows you to unzip the front for a lot of ventilation. And typically, even if it's raining out, having an unzipped front here, as long as you're moving, isn't going to get you that wet. There are plenty of good jackets that aren't raincoats on the market, but they can get wetted out. pants, right? So basically you want anything synthetic, anything synthetic and relatively breathable. I used to use a lot of poly cotton and Nyko, but realistically, once they're wet, they aren't anywhere near as well performing as something that is a full nylon or full synthetic, full plastic, whatever you want to call it, and be damned to the microplastics. An actual shell is a popular choice, but once you're moving, sometimes it can be a little too hot, especially if you're working pretty hard. This is where your choice of shell comes into play. Is it Gore-Tex? Is it breathable? Does it have vents? These breathable synthetic pants are a lot easier to dry out at the end of the day as well. Especially if you have a fire or you stick them in a sleeping bag. Yeah. This is a Beyond Clothing K5 Maker's Pants. They have a built-in vent on the crotch somewhere. Right, they're pretty high quality. These are just normal DPM field pants. There's nothing fancy about them. I love them for hiking during the day when it's a decent temperature and when it's not gonna rain. I hate them for freezing rain. That's where synthetics shine. That's why your normal high-tech hiking pants are so much better than any surplus field pant. I'll put it that way. From left to right, we have two synthetic options. One's made by Outdoor Research and the other one is made by REI. Then we have the Nyko K5 Maker's Pants and a Polycotton DPM Pant. 
The full synthetic type of pants, however, have issues with fire. Embers will burn right through them, unlike a lot of polycotton or nyko. And they're really not as physically durable, especially with thorns and stuff like that, rocks. Gloves, right? I've never met a pair of gloves, including Gore-Tex, including stuff advertised as waterproof, that didn't get wetted out eventually in a rainstorm. If it's actually raining and not just sprinkling, I just give them up completely. I don't use them. Unless, of course, it's risk of injury to body, whatever. But uh, they almost become sacrificial. You will soak through them and they will become next to useless, unfortunately. And then you'll have to dry them out, which takes a lot of time and energy compared to other clothing items. And how do you keep your pack dry? Well, that's honestly pretty simple. Use a liner, and if you want to, double up with a pack cover. But the priority should be on the liner instead of the cover. A simple garbage bag, contractor bag, whatever, does exactly what you need to keep it everything dry inside your pack. Just take good care of it, don't let it get any holes. This is everybody's favorite part of the video, feet. So, keeping your feet warm and dry is one of the most important and also one of the most difficult parts of being in the rain and trying to move at the same time. And there are certainly a few different ways to do this. If your boots are worn out, uh, or if you make mistakes like stepping in streams, there are ways you can mitigate the damage. For example, take a second, pop your boots off, and use some sort of plastic liner, either a contractor bag or some sort of plastic bag, even a grocery bag, change your socks, and slowly insert your feet into those boots, then tie them. And it should keep your socks dry and keep your feet warm. Not gonna be as good as having dry boots, at least get you back to camp without being as miserable. Now, once you're back at camp, you can use Gold Bond as well as some sort of absorbent material, such as it's buried in pocket, such as a towel, or a paper towel or something like that stuffed into your boots at night in order to keep them dry or to dry them out once they're wet. Stuffed into a sleeping bag in order to use your body heat to dry them out. It is important to note the raincoat does more than just keep rain off of you. Properly vented, it can act as any other jacket. And realistically, in a lot of conditions, you don't need a jacket if you have a raincoat and some sort of good mid layer as well as a base layer. However, I would advise you to be wary of the hood. Using it certainly keeps you more dry, but it also restricts how much you can hear, how much you can see, and its physical bulk can make camouflage considerably more difficult. It's also worth noting that insulating yourself from snow is different than insulating yourself from rain. I use different gear that might get wetted out in the rain when I'm in the snow because it performs better in that environment. And unfortunately, no matter what rain gear you have, eventually it will get wetted out if you stay out long enough. Something else that's worth considering is, during heavy rains, runoff may be pushed into water sources that were once safe, especially in urban areas, making them now violently unsafe and making you horribly ill. Well, to conclude, layering in the rain is fairly simple once you understand the basics. But in order to get there, you need to understand certain principles. A base layer, a mid layer, and a shell. And of course, it's important to moderate these layers, take them off and put them back on according to your body temperature and make sure you don't sweat anything out. Being soaking wet leads to fatigue, misery, and it could also cost you your life. Chances are, if it's freezing rain during the day, it's gonna be well below freezing at night. And once in a while, depending on where you are, the weather you have might exceed what you are capable of, no matter what gear you have. And it's important to hunker down or turn back in those situations.